Hey, everybody. Welcome to Moment of Clarity. This is a big one. I have Greg Palast here. Uh, you know him as the uh, phenomenal investigative journalist and New York Times bestselling author. Before I bring him in, and by the way, take a second, please, to share this, let people know. I want to start off by showing you a short two-minute video that Greg Palast has just released on his, his investigation in Georgia. And uh, you'll see the details in a moment. But uh, I, th I think it might be some of the worst names he's been called by an elective of elected official, which is saying a lot because he's been called a lot of names by a lot of elected officials. So Marietta, Georgia. We're about to meet with a GOP official who says that she has personal knowledge that 32,000 people are voting illegally in this county. So my name is Pamela Reardon. I am currently 6th District Committee Woman to the State Party. I know for sure voters do not live here. Altogether, Reardon and her cronies are challenging 364,000 citizens' right to vote. This year, Georgia's GOP-controlled legislature passed a new law saying you can challenge an unlimited number of voters. Do you know this woman? That, you, you recognize that woman? Um, not offhand. I don't... Have you never spoke to her? No. No. What, what about this guy and his wife on his honeymoon? Do you recognize that man? Mm, no. So you didn't call him, but you challenged his right to vote or have his ballot challenged. Sir, get out of my house. Okay, I will get, get out of your house. ACLU of Georgia Attorney Rahul Garabadu. The challenge statute doesn't, didn't ever contemplate someone coming to town and challenging hundreds of thousands of voters at one time. Um, this, in our view, was an abuse of that statute. That doesn't mean that you get to print out reams and reams of Excel spreadsheets and just, you know, levy a charge against thousands of people that you don't even know and get them, you know, removed off the rolls. The 1871 Ku Klux Klan Act makes voter intimidation a crime. Imagine using the Ku Klux Klan Act of 1871. Here is NAACP lawyer Gerald A. Grace. You know, it, all, it gets real when you get arrested. Is real, real. You heard of the Ku Klux Klan law of 1871. I'm from Canada. So you don't know the Ku Klux Klan law. I'm from Canada. You clearly don't know Georgia law. He's a legal I voter. I got my right to vote in 94. So I don't like people voting illegally. Get out of my house now. I shall get out of your house now. And, and you are sure that this is your legal voting address? You are Georgia, divided down the middle. And this civil war ain't over. This is Greg Pallas in Georgia reporting. So there you go. Greg's latest piece. Let's bring him on to talk about it. Here's Greg Pallas. Hey. Hey. I couldn't even put on all of the uh, the statements that she had. Forget the beeps. I mean, she said, you know, she called me an a-hole. She said, and now you have to understand, she's dressed like Nancy Reagan, very formal, you know, in her <laughs> 70s Republican. And, you know, she says, F you. And she's like screaming at my staff, you're all a-holes. You know, so this is going on and on and her husband. But here's what you didn't see in the film. Lee. Yeah. Yeah. There was a reason why I skedaddled out of there quickly. Uh, which is um, she had a shotgun right next to the door where I was saying, is this your real? And she had between us on the table while I was interviewing her, she had uh, all these handguns and the ammo boxes all stacked up. <laughs> I'm not well, kidding let's, you. Uh, well, I'm glad you didn't get shot, but uh, l l let's back up and Thank maybe you. further explain uh, wh what it was you were asking her about and how exactly this came to be. You've been fighting various voter purging efforts in Georgia for years now, but this is a, like a this is a new one, huh? Yeah. So, you know, I was with Rolling Stone and Salon and at uh, The Guardian uh, investigating Georgia for eight years, vote you know, uh, vote suppression, as they call it, which is basically screwing black people out of their votes. And that I've been doing for 20 years. So I've been following Georgia for eight years because everyone just thought it was a red state, rednecks. Uh, and Martin Luther King III said to me, hey, Greg, you know, if they let us vote, it's a blue state. Uh, so I investigated and um, I, you know, do a lot of undercover stuff, et cetera. We, uh, how we got into her house, well, we'll discuss that another day. Uh, but... <laughs> What is she? Uh, what What is she running for? Uh, now she is currently a uh, a Republican Party official, but she is a, she is Marjorie Taylor Greene's candidate 
for vice chair of the Republican State Party of Georgia. Uh, she probably will win that one. And did, so what happened was this woman personally challenged the right of 32,000 people to vote, including you saw that black woman, Tamara Horn. She never called anyone. She never checked anything. I called Tamara. We called my, the Palace Investigative Team. We called 800 people. Uh, and she said they didn't live in Cobb County, which is a suburb of Georgia, so they can't vote there. They're all criminals. Big crime wave. She yeah. was joined. Her 32,000 challenges were joined by the chairman of the county party, the Republican chairman of the party, who added another 16,000 challenges. That's 48,000 votes. If they had, imagine if they'd done these challenges before the presidential race, uh, uh, Ancient Orange would still be president. He would have, you know, we'd have lost Georgia. Right. So what, what? They have, they're challenging, and this is a big point, Lee. Yeah. They're using something weird that many states have an old Jim Crow law that says that, that uh, a, any voter, they call him an elector, any voter can challenge any other voter. So it was a white guy saying, don't let Joe Black vote. He shouldn't be voting. Uh, but now, instead of the kind of white sheet patrol, it's become spreadsheets. They're sending in spreadsheets with all together in Georgia, these operatives of a Texas organization, almost all of them GOP officials, challenge 364 thousand voters 364 thousand voters that's a third of a million next, voters what's the next step in the process once they're challenged what happens then oh well that's why you saw that uh, uh that our lawyer from the aclu on this well two things for the well the first from the naacp guy the next step is to handcuff them uh and throw them in the can throw them in prison under the ku klux klan act of of 1871 it's it's a crime you can't just massively challenge people of color and say hey, that's a form of intimidation. Now, what they have to do, okay, you're challenged. Now you get now the county's supposed to send you a postcard saying you have to come in for a hearing to prove you are who you are. Now, most people get these cards, they think it's junk mail, they throw them away. What I gotta go in, I have to say who I am. Uh yeah. And uh the ACLU also noted that, you know, in Georgia, there's not a lot of vaccinated people. And uh, so you would be sending literally tens of thousands of people into a little county office during a pandemic. And jam it's insane. People would have to take a day off work and then they'd have to get in line with, with a couple thousand other people. Right. So the, at first, the counties have resisted it. But under this, the new law passed by the Georgia legislature, uh, because the county said, we can't do this. First, they mounted the challenge in December before the Senate runoffs, by the way. But the ACLU and Stacey Abrams organization all said, no, you can't remove people within 90 days of an election. What the ACLU and NAACP didn't know is that after the 90 days expire, these people are back with their challenges. So you have to go in and say, I am, I, you know, I'm Lee Camp and say, how do you know? <laughs> and here's where I live. Well, how do we, how can you prove that? So you get the, right. but if you can do that, you get your vote back. Thanks a lot. And 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 that that type of procedure benefits, the, you know, the middle class, upper class people that have time on their hands to go deal with something like that, that, well, you yeah. know, have have own cars, et cetera. But, well, remember, not everyone gets challenged. Right. They picked a third of a million out of five million voters and a suspicious amount of people like Tamara Horn, who is an African-American woman. She lost, by the way, her job during COVID, had to move, uh, had to sell her home. Moved down, the, moved down the street with her relatives into a relative's house. And uh, they challenged her vote because they said she moved. Well, you can if you move within your county in Georgia, you don't lose your vote. So you have a lot of low-income people who are shifting around, especially during COVID. This is always true. And they, the other group they're going after with this is students, Black people. Asian Americans are a big target, too. And as we speak, uh, just about an hour ago, the U.S. Justice Department sued over... Uh, this new law that was passed. But the, even the Justice Department does not know about these new challenges. That's brand new. So I'm going to, we'll be talking to the Justice Department to get their reaction of what we've just uncovered. Because this is yeah. all done itself. Spe speaking of that, the Justice Department doesn't seem to know. Uh, why is it, I've been interviewing you for <laughs> over a decade now. Why does it seem like you're the only one fighting this? It like, it, have, having these people not purge from the rolls would help the Democratic Party, you know, writ large. And uh -huh. so why is it you can't even get like most Democrats to be talking about this? It's kind of.
crazy. Well, oh, it may be crazy. Well, yeah, first of all, let's let's remember. Uh, we did have one Democrat, Stacey Abrams, who cited my investigations back in 2000. 18 to say, I won. I won't be inaugurated because the election was stolen. And she cited the, you know, the Greg Palast investigations that proved that uh, a third of a million people, again, there were illegally thrown off the rolls, including Martin Luther King's 92 year old cousin, famously, uh, who we were there when she was at her 92 year old butt tossed out of the polls. They said she couldn't vote anymore. It's going to be her 50th year voting. And so, yeah, so we have one person, but uh, I, and you may not know this, but Stacey Abrams is black and but so it's it's not that democrats don't know about stolen votes it's the white congressional caucus the democratic side of the white conge congressional caucus which has a tough time they're beginning to take on the issue but remember uh their line is american elections are perfect and if you say otherwise we're going to take you off the internet so it's a contradiction right they want, you know right. we, we can't say american elections are perfect and then at the same time say, well, look what's happening in Georgia. They aren't perfect. They're stealing. They steal Georgia. Now, they didn't steal enough votes this past time because they, they got close. The challenge <laughs> failed. Yes. And they tried the challenge again before the election. What, what happened? What, happened. Is, what wasn't in that video is you asked her if she knew the people. She said no. And these right. are people she has personally challenged their right to vote. And so what did she you? You must have then said. Well, you challenged their right to vote. Why would you do that if you don't know them? And what was her response? Get out of, well, <laughs> you're all a-holes. Get out of my house. I did even better. What right. you don't see in the film, because it's only two minutes, is I actually had one of the voters that she challenged on the phone, on the speakerphone. I said, would you like to talk to Mr. Saul, whose vote you blocked? He's on the phone right now. You want to? Have you ever talked to him before? No? Well, here he is. I'm sure you want to talk to him since you don't want him to vote. It, explain why you've taken away this gentleman's uh, right as an American citizen. In fact, you've accused him of a felony crime because voting illegally is five years in the slammer. So he, right. she's accused tens of thousands of people. Now, remember, she's one of 88 GOP shills. But yes, so we had her. So we had the voter on the phone. We showed the photos. You know, I was able to contact people. I went to their homes, by the way, to make sure that they were, in fact, legit voters. You know, I don't trust anyone, as you know, Lee. But I've been doing this a long time. Yeah, it's very hard to get the uh, any party to really take on this issue. Finally, there's a bit of recognition because they're pushed by Stacey Abrams, the ACLU, and a lot of our publicity from our work. And, uh, um, you know, so now, for the first time, Biden found out, and the Democrats are beginning to say, Hmm, if we actually protect voters, we might win some states. If you know, <laughs> but there's always remember the fear of the Democratic Party of being seen as a black party, a racial issue. That Obama never took on the issue. Well, of, also of the Democratic Party is the spine of an arthritic jellyfish. So it's, it's well, that's why not... they don't. That's why people always ask me why they don't stand that, but it's the same reason jellyfish don't. But it's <laughs> um, it's <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's yeah. I mean, we're, we're laughing, but it's it's actually. You know, you got to laugh because so it's it's beyond insane. We so we are going to take this information to the Justice Department and see what their reaction is. I mean, are they serious about this stuff or not? So what happened in the new law? They took this old Jim Crow law because a lot of counties, even Republican counties, said we're not going to remove tens of thousands of people because you know some lady in a red dress says they shouldn't vote. And remember, it's eighty-eight counties that this was happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now the new law says, if you don't take these people off, if you don't accept the challenges under the new law, we can remove you from the elections board. And in fact, Helen Butler, who is head of a, a voting rights organization, she was my co-plaintiff in a successful lawsuit against Brian Kemp, the governor. And um, we won a federal lawsuit, and the result was because she's on the Monroe County Elections Board, the only Democrat, they yanked her off the elections board. That's what they can do now under the new law. They simply just said, you're out, We're replacing her with another Republican. So it's now 100% Republican board. And any board, even Republicans, and they're going after Republicans who won't accept these bogus challenges, they get removed by a brand new state board controlled by the governor, who's a, who's a right-wing fruitcake Republican, and um, and the two legislative leaders who are even more right wing, more fruitcake and more Republican. And that's who's in charge of voting now in Georgia. Good luck. So, you know, look, 
thank you for letting me expose this. And maybe um, the American media will allow it in too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. What? What? Are you want to have to broadcast from your submarines in an undisclosed location in the Atlantic? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do th this bill that the they're trying to get through Congress that they doesn't look like they're having much luck right now. Uh, having <laughs> having to do with voting. Do you have? Any hope for that? Is it? I, I haven't gotten into the details of the bill. Does it seem? Well, I'd say that the chance of its passing are roughly dead zero. Uh, because they're not going to pass any legislation which is going to protect the voters. And there are two bills, including the John Lewis Act, the second, which I think is more important, which says, "Look, we uh, we have to restore the Voting Rights Act." But the one thing is, I will say, it's still there. The Voting Rights Act may have bullet holes in it, may be bleeding on the steps of the Supreme Court. But there is Section 2, and, and as we speak, it's been a, about an hour ago, uh, the Justice Department did file under Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. Whether they're going to take this on or not, because this is, this is brand new. We just literally, as you're broadcasting this this week, we just busted this open. Everyone, like I say, ACLU, everyone was shocked that they were still, that they were using this gambit. It's an outside group. Remember, it's not the government even. It's outside group. Now it's in cahoots with the government, which makes it a, which should make it a crime, not only under the Ku Klux Klan Act, but the Civil Rights Act, conspiracy of government and a private group. Because the Secretary of State, a vicious right wing uh, vote munching Republican named Brad Raffensperger, who is otherwise known as a hero on MSNBC, um, he, the Republican Secretary of State, has actually invited in these, this, the organization that came up with this bogus list, True the Vote to come in and challenge voters. What he said was, I can't do this under federal law, just start removing voters like Tamara Horn, but private parties can, and then we as the state will accept your list. In other words, it's a little game. He's literally inviting them to come in to break federal law in cahoots with the state. Now, that's what, we still have laws on the books against it, believe it or not. It's actually illegal to go out of your way to stop hundreds of thousands of black people from voting. It's still kind of against the law in the, in the United <laughs> States. But Barely. I know Georgia, Barely. you know, that's, you know, then there's that legal question Supreme Court's going to have to take on. Is Georgia part of the United States and do our laws apply there? Yeah, there, there's so many steps that have to be taken to actually give us a legit democracy uh, at any point, uh, you know, such as getting off these crap uh, computerized voting machines that no other country is dumb enough to use like we are. Um, but but yeah, th thank you. Thank you for all your work. What are you working on next? Uh, I'm going to I'm going back into Georgia. Well, here's here's the problem. I'm going after the billionaires behind this because, OK, this is a Texas group which gave these bogus spreadsheets to Georgia Republicans. But behind this group called True the Vote out of Houston are billionaires, the Bradley family of Wisconsin. They're the new Cokes. They spent $2 billion now on ultra right wing causes. And they're, they're not going to be done with Georgia. They're going to go to Texas, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Georgia. This is going to spread. This is going to spread. And just like the Ku Klux Klan, you know, just suddenly metastasized with the white sheets, this spreadsheet game is going, if they win in Georgia, it's going to go everywhere. <laughs> Instead of white sheets, now it's spreadsheets. I like mm -hmm. that. I like I, that. I, 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 why would you like that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, but that's, what, that's exactly what's happening, Lee. And that's where I'm going next. I'm going after the billionaires, the group in Texas, and of course... More of these, uh, geo, uh, you know, in, in uh, Georgia, it's serious stuff because next year is the re-election of the uh, Reverend Senator Warnock. Stacey Abrams is probably going to run for governor against Brian Kemp. And it's not that I'm partisan. It's just that, hey, why don't we just let the voters choose the governors and the senators? No. Why no, not? That, that, that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. Not in Georgia. <laughs> but you, 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 can, uh, you can remain excited that you've outlasted David Koch. You've <laughs> essentially outlasted Chris Kobach. So I think you're winning. Oh, said, no, I'm sorry. Chris Kobach of Kansas, just if you don't remember his name, just think KKK. Chris Kobach of Kansas is running for attorney general there now. He, you know, he may have been buried, but someone forgot to put the golden stake through the heart. So he's back up out of the crypt and back up with this. Uh, there's, you know, trying to suppress the vote, not only in Kansas, but nationwide. And so we're not done. We'll be back. <laughs>
with more. I haven't All hung right. up my hat yet. Well, well, uh, keep pissing off the oligarchy, Greg. I, <laughs> I, I, I get thrown out of more houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hopefully. Uh, but next time I'll wear the uh, bulletproof vest. Thanks. Uh, what, what's the website? GregPalast.com? GregPalast.com. G-R-E-G-P-A-L-A-S-T.com. You can watch the video, spread it around, and we'll read the follow-up reports. Thank you, Greg. You're welcome. All right, that's Greg Palast, always doing great work on trying to have people's votes count because, you know, they, it, it's not that you'll ever stop them from stealing votes. We will never, I, in my lifetime, have a full-on legit uh, democracy or democratic republic, but you can swamp what's stolen. You can defeat what's stolen by having so many people voting that uh, it, it ends up being closer, at least closer to what the people actually want. And furthermore, especially on local issues, which are often not talked about, uh, you can have a massive impact by, you know, those local issues are often, uh, and local politicians are often, there's less fraud going on. There's uh, less purging of voters. There's, you can have more impact because it's fewer people you have to uh, actually convince to show up to the polls. So there's a lot of things going on here where voting does still matter, even if it is uh, so, you know, aggressively tampered with, uh, as Greg was talking about. Uh, at the uh, at kind of the larger level, the statewide level, the national level, but there's still something there. There's still something to fight for. And uh, Greg Bow seems to be one of the few that actually does that kind of investigative work. So many people, uh, you know, the mainstream media doesn't want to cover it because they want to tell you lies about how our election system is perfect. They also don't want to cover it because they don't want to have to fly to Georgia and go to people's houses. Too much work for them. They want to sit back and just give you the State Department talking points that were printed out of out of whatever fucking printing machine in their office, and then they don't have to go anywhere. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Uh, oh, and if you want to if you want to uh, become a member of and actually support this uh, or podcast Common Censored, go to liberapay.com slash Lee Camp, L-I-B-E-R-A-P-A-Y.com slash Lee Camp. Thanks, everybody. Keep fighting.